Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of the Brazilian Algebraic Geometry Seminar. I'm glad to introduce uh, William Montoya, uh, who's a postdoc here at the University of Campinas. He's uh, going to talk about an extension of the Nudel Lefschetz loci in toric varieties. William, please go ahead. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. So, uh, first of all, I will start talking about a little bit about. Uh, our ambient space about these guys, three varieties. So <clears throat> let's start. So the first definition is uh, to consider a lattice. Uh, these varieties are rich in a combinatorial way. <clears throat> uh, so you can imagine this just as a lattice uh, inside the d dimensional real space. And it's, it's dual. So a convex subset is a, a rational k-dimensional simplicial cone. If there exists k linear independent primitive elements in such way that if you want to reach a point with a entries integer entries, uh, the only way to do it is uh, with an integer uh, number. So that is written here. So this is a condition for being <clears throat> simplicial for a cone. And okay, uh, um, one cone is a face of the other cone. If you can generate uh, if one of the integral, uh, the integral generators of one is also the generators for the other. So I will talk about this later too. Okay. So and if you consider a collection of uh, cons with that condition of being simplicial, uh, you get what is called a uh, affine. I'm interested in this kind, okay, asking for some conditions. The first condition is like uh, all phases of cons in sigma are in sigma. So in principle, there is no restriction for dimension here. So they can be like K, one, two, three, up to, of course, the, the dimension of the lattice with the condition that all faces of cone in sigma are again in sigma. The intersection are faces for both. If you have two uh, simplicial cones and you intersect them, uh, you get again, uh, <clears throat> you get a face of, of both uh, simplicial cones. And when you take a uh, all the, the cons uh, inside the fan, uh, you get the, the real lattice, or let's say the complete space where are you uh, working on. So the interesting thing about this kind of uh, varieties, one of them is like when you realize or when you, <clears throat> what to say, like when you make the geometrical realization of these fun as a toric variety, you get something that has only a billion uh, quotient singularities. Uh, that means, in a sense, like if you, they are all before in the analytic uh, point of view. Every point has like a open, it's every point has, yeah, has an open neighborhood that looks like an open set of their finest of their fun. Yeah, the affine scheme, the question uh, a, a billion group. Okay. Okay. So before I enter this, so uh, for the, okay, I mentioned that for the perspective, uh, for the differential point of view, this is an orbifold. And also it has an interesting property. Ah, okay. The, the, yeah, of course. The, the, like every point looks like U quotient G, and that G is a subset of the linear group uh, without reflections. So here there are uh, there is an example. This is the weighted projective space, uh, one one two two. Uh, these are the one dimensional simplicial cones. I only wrote them. But a two simplicial cone that is 
is inside this fund is let's say all possible combination of these ways and the three-dimensional simplicial cones are all the possible combinations that you can take these ways so the fund is a, the collection of all of them and when you make the geometrical realization of this fund as a toy variety rays are going to divisors the two-dimensional things are going to curves uh, three-dimensional things are going to points and indeed that they are like the Tori points, the, the Tori curves, and the Tori devices. What uh, is going to tell about this? Okay, yeah, okay. So, the interesting thing first that this is a singular, and the singularity also can, is, in this case, is a, is a Tori curve. And, it's, it's here. and here there is another interesting example. And it's, uh, P2 cross P1. Uh, this is R gain in R3. This is just one zero zero. This is the opposite uh, vector for one. And toric, toric varieties are really, really rich in the sense of combinatory. For example, if you see here, uh, I have one, two, three, four, five rays. And our dimension is three, and five minus three is two. That is coincides with the Picard number of P2 plus P1, but it's not a coincidence. Also, it happens here, and there is a theorem in, uh, in toric, toric geometry. So it's just to mention uh, an interesting example of how just with this combinatorial data, you can get some geometry properties, okay? Uh, okay, there is another uh, approach. Okay, there are many approaches to toric varieties. Uh, one interesting is this approach as the modular space of queer representations. This is a theorem of Crow. I hope I pronounce it correctly. Uh, and Smith, 27. And it says that if the, if the projected toric variety <clears throat> has a list of line band, then it's possible to identify the Tori variety as the fine modular space. Uh, this is just here a uh, weight related with the uh, with the quiver and the relations that we put in the quiver. Uh, I just discovered this paper like some weeks ago. So I have this question that I would like to work on it. Is if there is a natural way, okay, first of all, to study Hodge theory. I think it's possible to put to this modular space uh, a Hodge structure that I will tell you later what is what a Hodge structure. Maybe most of you already know it, but I will talk about it later and we come back again to this problem. Okay, to this question. <clears throat> so, definition of the Cox ring is uh, the polynomial ring where you introduce uh, each variable here correspond to one rate in the fund of the Tory variety. And it's grading for the class group of the Tory variety. And in our, uh, con our condition, uh, another interesting thing of this implicit projected Tory variety is that the Picard group is free and it's inside here. And when you tensor with the rational numbers, you get an isomorphism. So in principle, this can have torsion, but uh, on our conditions of being simplicial, uh, we get these isomorphisms after tensorizing with rational numbers. Okay, so uh, so far I just introduced uh, the ambient space. So this is going to be as the classic in classical algebraic geometry is the projective space. Yeah, of course, it's an example. It's a, more natural example of Tory variety, the projective simplicial Tory variety is a smooth variety, the classical projective space. It's going to be uh, the ambient space. Okay, so now I, I will introduce a, a generalization of what, what a complete intersection variety means in this, this world. So let F1 until Fs homogeneous polynomials. Homogeneous means like belongs 
on one of these. In principle, as in the example of P1 cross P2, this can be a big rating. Okay. Uh, so, uh, homogeneous polynomials in the Cox ring. So, the zero locus uh, defines a cloud subvariety as in the classical way. And this open set is another way also to construct. When you quotient with the torus, the torus being something topologically uh, C star n, the complex numbers with the zeros power uh, as many ways there are here. It's another way to, to realize a, a toric variety, but okay. So if you consider the zero locus, you get something, a close of variety, uh, <clears throat> done, uh, where uh, Z sigma is the relevant locus, and this is the relevant uh, ideal. In the classical setting is just the idea generated by the variables, let's say in P3, X1, X2, X3, X4. And okay, what else? It's okay. I don't know if there is there is any question. <clears throat> so yes. Here uh, we have a, let's say the main object or the object that I'm interested in <clears throat> is a, a quasi smooth intersection. So variety, it can happen that they can, uh, in a sense, like it. In principle, the variety can have some singularities, but can live in the in the zero locus of the relevant idea. So it's empty when you intersect with this guy, or it's just as smooth as in the usual the usual case. Uh, so this general like this is like the, the, the right definition for complete intersection in toric varieties. It was introduced by Malvito in 1999. Uh, it generalized complete intersection and in particular generalized the idea of what a uh, hyper smooth hypersurface is. Okay. So here is the uh, one of the interesting results of Malvito magnitude of work. Uh, let X be a class subset uh, defined by homogeneous polynomials, S, in principle in the irrelevant idea. Uh, then the natural isomorphism, it is just the iso the, the, the natural morphism, sorry, is the morphism induced by the inclusion of the uh, quasi smooth intersection inside the projective variety, it's contravariant. It's an isomorphism with I is strictly less than D minus S, and it's an injection when uh, I is equal to D minus S. If you see, when you get, if you put S is equal to one, you get the classical S equal to one and the toric variety, the, the usual classical projective space, you get the, which is hyperplane theory, the classical one, right? It's like, uh, according with this theorem, like the interesting part of the cohomology of a subvariety is exactly here. Okay. Okay. So, in, when we are interested in the D minus S cohomology, since the uh, I star is an injection, it makes sense to consider this quotient. So in a way, this measure the uh, the cohomological classes that are not coming from the ambient space. So if, if this is zero, it means like this morphism is surjective, right? being injected inside isomorphism. That means all the cohomological classes are coming from the ambient space. Here I define what a Hodge structure is, a pure Hodge structure. is a, 
a collection of finite, finitely generated abelian groups satisfying the, the composition that is well known for Kähler compact smooth manifolds that this uh, the composition always exists and due to uh, uh, coxan um, steamwick and uh, doubleton maybe the name uh, also exists in our city for quasi smooth uh, intersection variety. So they, they have to satisfy this decomposition. Uh, also this conjugation condition. And that's all. If you can put that inside the cohomology of a variety, you, you are uh, in the hot structure. Most of the cases, when, when the variety is smooth, you can put it. And uh, when it's singular, it exists this, uh, what is called weak hot structure. But sometimes it's also a pure hot structure. But you have to approach just for with filtration. It's like the way to approach the but something is singular is like the classical technique. Okay. Uh, so uh, an important fact about uh, in this uh, story work is like both the projective variety, the quasi smooth intersection, some variety, both of them have pure hot structure. And moreover, is compatible with the uh, with E star with the restriction of, of, with the morphies uh, coming from the inclusion, and so it makes sense to put a uh, Hodge structure also for the primitive commodity. Okay, so we have this makes sense to to Hodge theory in this setting too. So coming back to uh, to the world of Crow and Smith, I just want to point out that, okay, here we are. So they, they realize that a Tory variety can be identified with this guy. So since we know, we already know that you can study Hodge theory here, my question is like, if it's possible under this morphine that it looks pure, it's, it's very algebraic. So is it possible to put the natural, let's say of a canonical a Hodge structure to this guy? So uh, moreover to study in the lecture theory in terms of this, the representation of weavers and relations. Okay. But I know the <clears throat> too much about that. Okay. So another, another consequence of the Lepchus theorem is that every cohomological class in HPB, when P is different from this, P, D minus S over two, when you decompose, really are thinking that you I decompose the uh, the group cohomology of the variety is a linear combination of algebraic cycles. Okay, why? Because uh, it's well it's well known understood that on these projectory varieties, uh, the whole picture holds. That means like all cohomological classes, uh, uh, they come from an algebraic cycle. And since for the Lepchus theorem, this is an isomorphism and respect the, uh, the Hodge structure here and here. So the Hodge conjecture is also true. Or you can, it's also true for when I is less than D minus S. So the inter again, the interesting part is here. So uh, let us see what happens when P is equal to D minus S over two. So the idea is to, in spite of mobile to uh, work, is to relate 
a uh, quasi smooth ice per sure. Given this quasi smooth intersection, I will construct a quasi smooth hypersurface and another toric variety whose fan depends of X and the final of, the, of this toric variety and translate the theorems of, let's say, the theory known for hypersurfaces to quasi smooth intersections. This is like the, the key idea, like the philosophy behind uh, at least this construction. Okay. So uh, that construction, it has a name, is known as the Calais tweak. Even these line bundles uh, correspond to, uh, to the hypersurfaces, like we have X1 till XS different hypersurfaces. And if you consider the, the projectivization of this vector bundle, this is again the toric variety. This is again a toric variety, and indeed is the toric variety I'm looking for. Okay, so here is a more detail the construction, like how to to construct explicitly the generator, the simplicial cones. So I'm not going to enter too much too much in that technical details, but uh, yes. Let's continue. Okay, here is uh, like uh, the first contribution that uh, we made, and um, is this isomorphism between the primitive cohomology of the uh, quasi-smooth intersection and the uh, hypersurfaces related by the calitric. So here's like the sketch of the proof again, as I already said. This is like the key idea, the calitric. Consider like that for, for one, L1 to X1, that way, respectively, to, uh, to consider the projectivization of this bundle. And this, uh, here, this is an, import, an important fact that the Cox swing is like given, given the fun, you construct the toric variety, and the toric variety is also coming a Cox swing under. And this is are exactly the number of rays in the fan associated with this story variety. And this is going to be important for a lemma that I just realized like uh, some days ago. I, I completely believe this too, but maybe I have to improve some details, whatever. But this is an important fact that it's, this new story variety, its coxswing is Pretty related with the previous story variety, or with the story variety you started with. Okay. And this part of the of this uh, isomorphism is due to Mabito. He related, oh no, sorry, he related Mabito was the quasi uh, smooth intersection. So is this uh, the right hand of the isomorphism? And the left hand is due to uh, Cox. Due to Cox and uh, oh my God, I that Okay, but it's, it's, it's in the work of Cox where he introduced a uh, Hodge structure for projective theory varieties. It's a very classical paper, but I forgot the, the other author, sorry. But okay, and this guy here is the, uh, it's called the Jacobian ring. And is the rating part of the Cox swing. In this case, is this guy. This is the Cox swing here, quoting the different the partial differentials of this guy here. This is the like the like the connection between t, these two uh, these two words. Uh, separately. Uh, Mabutov realized this, and Cox 
this one. So I just, I did was to uh, put it together uh, with the idea to prove a natural lectures type theory. Okay, so now I'll try to, to introduce that. So here we have the Calais trick map. And if you put like a proper condition or suitable conditions for the dimensions of the number of intersection of the sub variety, you make sense to do a netter, netter theory in this setting, in this way. Okay. And the above isomorphism just uh, become like this. And again, when you get S equal to one, X is going to be equal to, to Y. And I mean, you'll get any information, but uh, you realize that uh, we are really generalizing the, uh, the theory for, uh, for bigger amount of varieties. Not only hypersurfaces, but intersection between them, let's say. Okay. Uh, so, in this side, this is the complete linear system uh, associated with the degree of this hypersurface. Okay. And these are the, just the polynomials that uh, cut uh, X. Here is possible to do natural lectures theory once you pose a condition uh, in the Tory variety. Uh, I call it a surjective property, but I will enter to discuss this with more details. Okay, so here is possible to study natural lectures. We know this is the contour you know, of clothes subsets, or well, let's say clothes subschemes, and taking the inverse image, you get something here that is what I will call a the netter, the new or the extension of the netter lectures loci. Okay. So this subjective subjectivity property uh, was named by uh, Bruzzo and Grassi uh, as the an uh, other condition is uh, whenever you have the class. Whenever you have a class that is sample and the other one is net, this morphism, this natural morphism is subjective. Okay. Uh, and a variety satisfying this uh, is called Oda variety. And it was motivated by a paper of Oda. I think it was like 2023. And he was studying when a polytope associated with some uh, bundles. Uh, some divisors, let's see, <clears throat> not like bundles, some divisors, uh, they behave well. Well, in the sense, like if you have the polytopes of, of both of them and you sum, they behave like you were summing just numbers. So, all I was studying this thing, and this can be translated in a, for the polynomial of the Cox ring in this way. Okay. So here are some properties of other varieties. It's like these propositions allow you to produce this machine. To pro these are machines for produce other varieties. It's mutatory varieties with Picard number two is another variety. For example, P two cross P one. Uh, the total space that is going to be very important for uh, our natural lectures type theorem, because if you remember in the Calais trick, we relate for a Tory variety and a quasi smooth intersection, a projective bundle. So if you put the condition of being all that to that variety, the projectivization of that bundle is going to be all that again. And let's say here also another way to construct uh, all the varieties are when the Picard number is one and it has zero regular, regular in the sense of casting one. So it's also a way to construct all the varieties. Okay, so here the theorem. Uh, 
let uh, PD sigma be another projective simplicial toric variety, then for a very general intersection super variety X uh, cut off by F1 till Fs, such that this condition is satisfied. This is a relation between D, the dimension of the toric variety, S, the amount of intersection that you are doing. And this K is just to guarantee that when you cross a the Calais map, you get, uh, you make sense of natural lectures theory there. Because usually natural lectures theory is, is uh, makes sense just to study in when the ambient space has odd dimension. So this is why I put this condition here. Okay. Tell more about this. Okay, because when under the Calais tweak, this uh, projectivization of the bond has this dimension. So if I put the condition here to be 2k plus 2, so I will get something of dimensional. This is why the condition. And in this kind of condition, I'm being toric and other, it's possible to do natural lectures. And with the Calais map, it's possible to translate it to the world of quasi smooth intersection sub varieties. Okay. So this is why is this condition. So this is also a, a, an interesting condition of to guarantee the let's say the other the other property the, during the proof the other to get use of the other property put in the toric variety. Okay, and the, under these conditions, uh, a very general uh, quasi smooth intersection. I remove here the quasi smooth. Uh, part because I think being very general guarantee that the intersection is going to be quasi smooth, but whatever. So we have also, okay, this is not really an equality, it's an isomorphism of the interesting part of the commodity. Lectures type theorem uh, give you the isomorphy when uh, uh, we call it that way. I, I was uh, less strict, less than D minus S. And in this case, is I equal to D minus S. So uh, Lepchus theorem only talks about the injectivity. But here also you get surjectivity when the quasi smooth hypersurface is very general. Okay. <laughs> Again, if you if you put S equal to one here, uh, when you put exactly when you put s equal to one here and here the classical projective space you get the natural lecture the classical natural lecture okay as a corollary we can tell again like before since the all the cohomological classes in a projective toric variety uh, are algebraic so you yeah, and this morphine respect the structure, the Hodge structure, you get again the same property here. And this is equivalent to say that the whole the Hodge conjecture holds uh, on X. This is the color of this uh, metal lectures type theorem. Okay. Okay, just the thing that I mentioned before. You apply the natural lectures theorem for hypersurfaces in the side in the other side of the Calais tweak. You use the Calais map to come back to a quasi smooth intersection and satisfy this. Okay. This theorem is due to also and Grassi again, put like 2010, maybe. Okay, so the, yeah, if the primitive class is zero, that means like the remember that this is a quotient 
the chromological classes. Okay, not no, no this dimension, but the, you know, the, the, uh, the group chromology. If this is a quotient, and if this is zero, that means like all the homological classes are coming from the ambient space. And since there is well known the Hodge conjecture for the ambient space, so you can and the morphisms respect the Hodge structure, you get the same for uh, this variety. So, okay, more about uh, other varieties because. If we apply here the Netter Lepschitz theorem and we put the other condition just because it's easier to translate that condition to the new projective variety, the projectivization of that uh, vector one. But in the real proof, okay, the original proof of Bruzzo and Grassi, uh, they have a more relaxed uh, condition of the subjectivity of the model. So they put the condition is under the uh, Jacobian ring, not under the, the, the Cox ring, but in the, in, the Jacob, in the Jacobian ring. This is the uh, differential, okay, the Jacobian, like the differential, the partial differential of the uh, hypersurface you are dealing with. So, but they made this conjecture. They asked if, if you have the subjectivity of these morphisms, for a very general hypersurface, they ask if this is also subjective. This is, uh, as far as I know, still an open problem, but I just wanted to mention. Okay, and finally, uh, an extension of the Netter lectures low side. Uh, this Netter low side is precisely. Now we know for the Netter lectures theorem that for every quasi smooth intersection, every no, for very general quasi smooth intersection, this is an isomorphism. But the Netter lectures low side is precisely the complement of that. So it's precisely the place where this is not true, when the equality is not true where there are some homological classes here that they don't come from the ambient space. Of course, this is always not, okay, not always, but usually this is not empty, but uh, it's not empty, but it has, it's, 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 an, it's an a geometric place, it's a loci. I mean, it's possible to deform A and it's still be there, to consider open subsets, to put analytical structure, uh, even so, Big guys prove that uh, uh, they are algebraic, like the components for the case with S is equal to one, and the ambient space is the classical projective space. Uh, the components of the slow side are also algebraic, as the Hodge conjecture predict. So there, is, there, are, there are many interesting things to tell about this slow side. Uh, okay, when S is equal to S and K are equal to one, we get P3, and this is like the very beginning of the theory, motivated, of course, by Netter. This is Max Netter, so I can go further, no lectures. And the condition of, if you replace this here, you get this H11, and the condition of being different is equivalent to say that the Picard number is greater than one, or different from the ambient space in this situation. This is the very classical meta uh, lectures theory. Okay, but this is the a novelty example, at least for me. It's like you can usually you can study a natural natural lectures theory in this guy because usually it's with hypersurface. So you will will. You, you are interested to, to see what happened in H3. And if H3 doesn't have middle, middle the composition, the Hodge decomposition. But in this case, it's possible. In this case, it's possible when S is equal to two. But you don't study hypersurfaces, but the intersection of two hypersurfaces. 
now with these conditions. So the netter lectures theorem they hold. So it makes sense to study this uh, netter uh, netter lectures loci. Okay, and in reading the paper of Mato, when he mentioned this Calais trick, the idea of him was to translate the theory well known from hypersurfaces to quasi smooth intersection. But I think you can play the, the other game around. It's like if you know something about these quasi smooth hypersurfaces, for example, this, the one one flexible theorem, we know that for being this smooth, uh, the Hodge conjecture. Uh, hold. That means that when this is smooth, uh, every one one cohological class is algebraic. So I have this lemma, but I still don't know. It looks like it's true, but I, I still have some doubts because I just realized the, the lemma doing the slide. Uh, okay, so here I want to translate this to to the hypersurface related with this uh, in this case a smooth surface. And okay, so it's more precise to say that the net lecture low size is the geometric place where the Hodge conjecture is not trivial. Yeah, because in the the abstract I mentioned that you can understand this as the loci where the Hodge conjecture is unknown. But still it's interesting to study this even knowing the Hodge conjecture, for example, in surface. So it's more precise to say that the net lecture looks like is where the Hodge conjecture is not trivial. Okay, so this here is the lemma. Uh, why an hypersurface here? But it has to be in this way, right? Because I want to relate the quasi smooth intersection, the smooth intersection surface in P4. And my claim is that the Hodge conjecture also holds here. And uh, so I, I define, first of all, I, I, I these are the Poincare duals. So that will like the homology with the cohomology. First for, okay, here is S, sorry, here is S. Uh, okay, here is Y, close for mention, okay. So I define like the primitive homology. So it makes sense to consider the primitive homology here. So I take just the inverse of that uh, subspace here. Remember, this is just part, this is a subspace of the homology. In this case, it's a vector space, not just a group. We are considered rational numbers. I consider the inverse image. And for, okay. And for the Calais proposition, like the, the main proposition that we use in our Netter lecture like theorem, we have this isomorphism. So I try I translate the isomorphism here in cohomology to the homology. Okay. And I know for X that has to be S. So here is S, the Hodge conjecture holds. So that means every guy here, oh sorry. So yeah, every guy here is algebraic. So they all come from things here that are the zero locus of something. So they are algebraic varieties. And this is my conclusion. It's like if you have a generator for this, <laughs> all of them are the single side of homogeneous polynomial. Because we know for the one one lecture theorem, this, this is true. So it has to be also true for for what? As I, so, I wrote the, just this yesterday, so I don't know if maybe there is some mistake, but for me it looks pretty natural and true. So I call it a week to two lectures result or better theorem because the hypersurface has to be in this way. Cannot be arbitrary, it has to be in this way. Too much. Okay. What else? Okay, so this is like something in favor of the Hodge conjecture. And we have also an interesting result. Okay. Uh, that also is in favor of the Hodge conjecture. 
but for for this, I I need some preliminaries. But okay, I think I still have time. So in order to do that, uh, I will define what a Cox current MLDL is, and this is a way to control like the given the net electron loci and hypersurface inside that that loci. Uh, this Macaulay theorem allows you to to have control in some sense of the degree and the dimension of sub varieties inside inside this hypersurface. And of course, the inside the metal lectures, those are. So, uh, this idea was implicit in the world of Catani, Cox, and Dickinson some years ago, like maybe 10 years ago. Uh, okay, so here are the definition. This is motivated for uh, Odwino's, it was inspired in, in, by Odwino's work. She defined this for the projected classical projective space. But it is more tweaky and complicated, of course, as usual, if you want to extend these for more toric uh, projective varieties. <laughs> so the idea is like this. So it's, uh, an ideal, in the irrelevant ideal is Gorenstein, cox gorenstein If it has a linear map and it has a, it satisfying this condition. You see, it satisfies some like uh, perpendicular condition in a sense. And uh, it has to be empty. That when you get to the classical case, this is the condition of being Artinian. But in this setting, it can happen that it's not Artinian, but if you put this condition, it also makes sense to, to extend the, the result. Okay, so here a proposition when you have a Cox Gorenstein idea, uh, you get this duality. You see, you have some duality between this guy. And there is an important degree here that is this N that is called the SOPO degree. You have some duality. You have a Cox Gorenstein. Okay, also uh, we, we define this because it's very natural to find this object. Even if, if you don't know the definition, even if during my PhD, I didn't know the precise definition, but uh, it's because when you study natural lectures theory and you try to, to understand what is going on with the tangent space of a point, these guys appear natural. So for me, it was like I, I knew there exists, but I didn't know how to define it properly. But yeah, it looks like this is the correct definition. And so here's some proposition. And the more interesting result is this. So here is how to construct, given some uh, polynomial satisfying uh, that its zero locus is empty. Um, with the, the right amount of, the ideal with the right amount of polynomials. This is like the linear map, the canonical linear map you can define to them. And this is like the important, uh, let's say, uh, theorem related with this Cox current style is if you have the right amount of polynomials satisfying that the zero locus is is empty. Remember that being empty is cut. I mean, they can't have intersection in the affine in the, in the affine in the affine way. But once you remove the zero locus of the real one ideal is empty. So that means to be empty in this uh, torrid world. And when you are in that condition, uh, you are facing a cox gorenstein ideal. And as I mentioned before, having this cox gorenstein ideals and this duality here, because if you remember, this is the, uh, the Jacobian ring. And the Jacobian ring, it has a deep connection with the middle cohomology of the cohomology where the where the Lepchitz theorem doesn't tell you anything. So this here is very related with that cohomology, and also really related with the uh, tangent space. If you construct the net Lepchitz as the modular space, and with all this. Uh, 
together, uh, we get this, this result. Okay. Uh, in the beginning, like when we post this in archive, we believe that it could be true for any toy variety for any Picard number, but it's, we couldn't extend the technique. It's more very analytic technique that didn't work for any Picard number. But there is an interesting paper of Dan like from some years ago, maybe 2014, I hope I'm saying correctly. And he used a different technique, like more algebraic crossing of passing to Hilbert schemes that it looks like we, we will be able to generalize this result for a uh, toric varieties with a bigger Picard number. Okay, yeah, I think that's all. Thanks for your attention. I hope you're still there. Thank you, William. Are there any questions? Uh, I have perhaps a uh, naive question. So you, you, you said a couple of times, William, uh, to do yes. nether Lefschetz theory. So on what do you mean by that? What is what does it mean to do net nether Lefschetz theory on a variety? Okay. Let me come back to to the to lectures. It's to, for me, to study natural lecture theory is to study which cohomological classes don't come from the ambient space. Okay. And lectures tried to understand this long ago, right? And he realized that most of them, and for all, most of the, uh, let's say, uh, dimension of the, not the dimension, like the, the degree of the cohomology is true. Like all of them come from the ambient space if this is happening. So most of the time it happens, but he couldn't cover this part. And he realized that there are some, let's say for, for him was a hypersurfaces, let's say surfaces. There are, there are surfaces that their, their cohomological classes doesn't come from the ambient space. And they have geometry. Geometry in the sense like they are not just points randomly in the space on the linear space. So there are analytic open sets, there are algebraic varieties, they, there is tangent spaces, there are some singularities. Mm -hmm. For me, that is net theory. theory. It's when you realize that there are some homological classes that they, they don't come from the ambient space. From the ambient space. And the net theory theorem tells you that very generally it happens. All the cohomology come from the ambient space. But the complement is the net lectures low side. Uh, for okay, it has yeah, and, and for me that's the net lectures too. Okay. Uh, and you and Ugo studied the the case of um toric varieties. But are, are, is there literature on other varieties that uh, people study? Yeah. In India, Shirinibra, I, I, I'm really bad with names, but there is a guy that he proved a natural lecture type theory for projective normal varieties with rational singularity, really, really more general. Okay. But it is difficult to see how, 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 how the, how to put the Hodge structure, right? Because if you see another interesting thing is like most of the, as the projective space, all the interesting part is in the middle cohomology, right? Like mm -hmm. if this is two K plus one, this is KK. The interesting part is in KK. 
being in KK, you are assuming already that you have a Hodge structure inside. Even if you put you prove something like this in more general setting, it's also difficult to see how the uh, Hodge structure, how to put in a canonical Hodge natural way the Hodge structure. Okay. But yeah, but yeah, it's possible to study this in a more general setting. Thank you. Are there other questions or comments for William? Okay, so let's uh, thank William again.